Hello guys, I'm just going to talk about inequality today. I'm just trying to see whether the audio is fine, whether the video is fine. We will go live in a few seconds, that's what we are saying. Uh, where am I? <laughs> Somewhere in the wide world, uh, internet world. So we're going to discuss uh, inequalities today. We're going to see a bunch of questions that I have. We focus on you know, different templates. Uh, we're predominantly dealing with a quadratic or linear or cubic equation, which is uh, greater than or less than or equal to something else. And so that's what we're trying to, to solve here. So the idea would be to go, go step by step, go as much from first principles as possible, uh, get as many fundings as clearly done as possible. So hang in there. We, we are running this session on YouTube and uh, simultaneously on Facebook as well. So those of you who are doing the, uh, the e e event on Facebook, do ping on to YouTube to see the live class. Those of you who are pretty much only on um, on one of the two platforms, remember the other platforms there. So if you're on YouTube, go to FB, if you're on FB, go to YouTube. Super. So I'm going to do this, share my screen, and then start out by answering these questions. I'm going to not discuss much of theory. I'm going to answer uh, do most of the steps that require solving. So we sit and solve and figure stuff out. I'm not going to do much by way of theory. So if you don't know your basics in inequalities, hit pause, go hit those basics. Very aggressively, very well. It's a, it's a tough topic to get the hang of. There's a lot of detail that matters, a lot of fundings that are important. Get that done and then come back. So, we're not going to bypass that and do some uh, mantra based solving. We still solve intuitively, we still solve from, from first principles and, and all of that. But we are not going to, we're not going to do all of the theory. We don't want to keep that in mind. Super, guys, I'm going to share my screen and then start up with this. Here we go. I hope you guys can see the screen now. It says, what are the value of x? What are the range of values of x that satisfy the equation x into x minus 2 and x plus 4 greater than 0? As ever, I'm going to give uh, you some time to solve this. So give that a go. See if you can I, uh, kind of wind your head around this. Then I'm going to give a, a starting step, which could be interesting with solving this, this template. And then we we'll go down to solve. And so the question is x into x minus 2 into x plus 4 greater than 0. We are merely a quadratic with a beautiful rule, which is between the roots, roots outside the roots. That's something that you can use, which we will be using uh, a few questions beyond this. And so it's not just a quadratic, it's a cubic equation. And so think about this, give this a go. Trying to set the stage for what we'll be discussing. Wonderful. I'm going to discuss this question, but not specifically solve this, but we kind of think about inequalities of this type. Right? We don't want to solve this inequalities. I'm going to say x into x minus 2 into x plus 4 equal to 0. Forget about the inequality, create an equation out of this. Where does this go to 0? This goes to 0 at x equal to minus 4. This point. It goes to 0 at x equal to 0 and at x equal to 3. So mark this point where it goes to zero. And the beauty of zero, that when you're solving for equal to zero, you've got that. Being greater than zero or less than zero, we don't really have to worry about the magnitude. We only have to worry about the sign. What I mean to say is x into x minus 2 to x plus 1, whether it's a billion or just point zero two, both are greater than zero. All I'm thinking of is, is this term positive? When will this expression be positive? That's all I'm going to think about. I've, I've forgotten about this inequality. I've said if we put equal to zero, then think about when it goes to zero. That is minus four, two, and zero. Now I'm going to think about only this part where x is greater than two. I'm going to substitute a bunch of values. X is greater than two. This part will be greater than two. This part will be greater than zero. X minus two will be greater than six. When x is greater than two, Again, I don't worry about magnitude. When x is greater than 2, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. 
x is greater than 2, this entire range is inequal to so, Straight away, I know for our inequality, x greater than 2 works. All values. Now let's put x equal to 1, not greater than 2, between 0 and 2. So that's 1. x equal to 1, 1 into 1 minus 2 into 1 plus 4. Forget about the magnitude, this is positive, negative, positive. Positive into negative into positive. The product will become negative. Or if x were 1, this doesn't work. Now think about it. x equal to 1.2, this will remain the same. 0.5, this will remain the same. Remember, I don't care about magnitude, I worry only about sign. So anywhere between 0 and 2, this is positive, this is positive, this term is negative. Positive into negative into positive here. Now, bunch of small things to keep in mind here. First one, it helps to identify the roots and then break the number line region. Second thing, if you're worrying about only positives and negatives, in between 0 and 2, I can just put to one point. The behavior will be the same for all points here. Whether I select x as 1.1 or 1.99 or 0.003, it doesn't matter. That's how the inequality will be here. Very important points. Now let's go this side. Let me put x equal to minus 1. So minus 1 into minus 1 minus 2 into minus 1 plus 4. This is positive. This is negative. This is negative. Product of two negative numbers is negative. Is it? Product of two negative numbers is positive. Product of these two is positive. Into positive. To be positive. Here it works. So the entire range from minus 4 to 0, it will work. Less than minus 4. Can I take a guess straight away? Will it work? All three terms will be negative. Negative, negative, negative. Product of three negative terms, negative. So here it doesn't work. What is the solution range that works? Minus 4 to 0, 2 to infinity. All four print rivers. So we are talking about greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 10. Very simple, identify the roots, draw the number line, carve out ranges that you have to think about, and then you are done with any kind of question of the step. And be methodical, but knock it off. You know, it's a very simple topic if you get the fun right. Now, what's the fine points to remember? It will always alternate like this. We get one, we get everything. Unless there is a double root sitting somewhere. What do I mean by that? We just call it for x minus 3 into x minus 2 whole square into x minus 5. And it's a double root at 2. That means it's going to change signs twice over. So there 2 will not be a turning point. So you have to keep those kind of things in mind. But otherwise, generally, as a simple rule of thumb, the regions will alternate. If it's positive in this region, it will become negative. Then positive, then negative. Because one term that used to be positive in one region is going to become negative in the other region. That's what you're thinking about. So just flip sign. So that's an important idea to learn. Next one, very vital point. Solving for x into x minus 2 by x plus 4. Or x into x minus 2 into x plus 4. And that means the same. Positive by positive is positive. Positive into positive is positive. Product of two negative numbers. Minus into minus is plus. Minus by minus is also plus. We are only worrying about the sign here, not the magnitude. Remember? So we talk about whether positive or negative. If x into x minus 2 into x plus 4 is positive, then x into x minus 2 by x plus 4 will also be positive. So whether it's product or quotient, so this could be we would have been solving for x by x minus 2 into x plus 4 greater than 0. The answer remains exactly the same. And so what do we need to worry about in that context? You have to worry about denominator not going to zero. But then that becomes something by zero. But that caveat you need to remember. But otherwise, when you are doing solving for x minus 3 by x minus 5 or x minus 3 into x minus 5 in an inequality, as long as you are comparing with zero, it doesn't matter. And very vital part, I want to start a first question by discussing a bunch of these things. Identify zeros, carve out a number line, then you are done. Look at the number line. Identify the zeros. Zeros for either the numerator or the denominator. What do I mean by that? When does the numerator go to zero? When does the denominator go to zero? Identify those points. They'll effectively be turning points for positive negative for this expression. 
once you have identified some few few points, I'll let you stick it in when answer is done. If you have a product or a portion, it doesn't matter. Well, you have something by something, you have to worry about denominator not going to zero. But that apart, the fundamental is the same. Don't worry about magnitude, worry only about strength. The beauty about comparing with zero is that fundamental. So worry about the zero. Take it to the zero point. Worry about whether it's positive or negative. Don't worry about whether it's a billion or it's a point one. Billion or point one doesn't matter. Both are greater than zero. Completely ignore magnitude. Worry only about the strengths. Wonderful question. Let's go to the next one. I just want again, I want to give you a couple of minutes. Discuss a little bit of theory. Those of you who know all the fundays, go ahead and solve this. Those who don't, I'm going to outline this. We so, have yeah, y minus p into y minus q. It's an expression. This has roots p and q. And where does it go to zero effectively? Now, y minus p and y minus q, when will it be greater than zero? When will it be less than zero? When y lies between the roots, it will be negative. When y lies outside the roots, it will be positive. Very simple, the very vital funda y minus p by y minus q. When it will be greater than 0, when y lies outside the roots, or minus infinity to p union q to infinity. I'm assuming p less than q. When will it be negative? y belongs to the range p by q. So they are solving quadratic inequalities. So stay on top of this, you should know this funda. And very clearly you should know this funda. And I'm going to elaborate on this funda, think about it more visually as you go further down. See if you get the time to discuss that also. But the funda you should know. Y minus P by Y minus Q, when it will be greater than zero when Y lies outside the roots. When it will be less than zero when Y lies between the roots. Between the roots, you get outside the roots positive. Remember, it has to be this format. Now, this means for y minus p by y minus q, the funda remains the same. We've already seen that. Whether it is division or multiplication, as long as you are comparing with zero, conceptually the answer has to be the same. So the same range has to come about. Keep that in mind. Now, this question is not that simple. We're not doing an x minus 1 by x minus 3. The question where x minus 1 by x minus 3 less than 0. Roots are 1 and 3, less than 0, should be between the range 1 to 3, and good to go. When x belongs to the range 1 to 3. This is not just that, you must remember that. We are not solving for just x minus 1 by x minus 3. We are solving for mod x minus 1 by mod x minus 3. Mod x could be x, mod x could be minus x, depending on what you are handling and all that. How do we do this? We want to simplify this. We don't know how to solve mod x and mod x. We know how to solve x. Then we want to say, y equal to mod x. We're solving for y minus 1 by y minus 3 less than 0. Where does this work? Then will y minus 1 by y minus 3 less than 0. 1 less than y less than 3. Y should be between the roots. That we know. Between the roots negative, outside roots positive. Now let us come back and put this is mod x. 1 less than mod x less than 3. 1 less than 1 x less than 3. Or x could lie between 1 and 3, or it could lie between minus 3 and minus 1. Or x lies between minus 3 and minus 1. Or x lies between 1 and 3. Either the range minus 3 to minus 1, or the range 1 to 3, both will work. We don't know how to do mod x minus 1 by mod x minus 3. We know how to do x minus 1 by x minus 3. So eliminate the mod. See, you make a very simple substitution, y equal to mod x. y equal to mod x, y minus 1 by y minus 3. When will y minus 1 by y minus 3 be less than 0? We already discussed this. When y lies between the roots. Why, why does that rule work? That you need to 
learn properly, visualize it, and apply uh, your head around that. So try to do that. Yes, it's material available for that. It's available on the Tumani online courses, but you dealt with that in great detail. Right now, I'm taking that for granted. Between the roots, negative, outside the roots, positive. That will be negative. Why actually like between the roots? Roots are one and three. Why like between one and three? What is why? Mod X. So mod X lies between one and three. Mod X is greater than one, less than three. Either one to three or minus three to minus one. Then the next one. X square minus five mod X plus six greater than zero. Again, a very interesting question. Uh, give the record, I'm going to give about half a minute Try this question. Try that, and then we can solve it. X squared minus five mod x plus six greater than zero. Again, we'll do a little bit of theory. Those who have not seen this, so modulus of x is a beautiful function. So, modulus of x is nothing but a magnitude of x. All the know this. Okay? Modulus of three is three. Modulus of minus five is five. Modulus of two point eight is two point eight. Modulus of minus three point seven. Is 3.7. Drop the sign, what you have, whatever you have as a magnitude, that's a sign. So we are representing this mod x can be said is equal to x, x greater than 0, equal to minus x, x is less than 0. This is a way of calling mod x as a function and defining it. It's a very heavy duty algebraic. Mod 3 is 3 mod minus 5 by 5, I know that. But why are they defining like that? Okay. So, it's a very interesting way of defining. So, no such definition. So, very often, very often, too often, I have my own comfort and confidence in the education system. People ask me, mod x equal to minus x. How will it be negative? Mod x cannot be negative. Mod x is not minus 6. Mod x is minus x. When x is negative, x already calls, carries a minus signal. So, minus of minus, it will become positive. Minus x can be positive. Minus 3 is negative. Minus x need not be negative. And so, so, so. Very often, students ask me, you are saying mod x is equal to minus x. How is that possible? Mod x cannot be negative. Of course, mod x cannot be negative. Minus x need not be negative. It's x, it's a variable, it can take many values. And so, that's a way of defining. So, very often, in many questions with modulus, you can break a modulus question like this. So, like anything. You solve a heavy duty modulus equation. Say I'm going to solve it for two templates and x is greater than zero, x is less than zero. Say x is greater than zero, wherever mod x is there, replace it with x solve. So now we can we're going to assume that for account for the possibility that x is less than zero. Whenever mod x comes to the equation, substitute with minus x solve. Collate both answers together, see for look for inconsistencies, I know the answer. So very simple. This way of defining it. Takes you to a very algebraic route for solving modulus equations. Very useful. So keep that in mind. So mod x is x if x is greater than zero. Mod x is minus x if x is less than zero. It's coming coming back to this question. X squared minus five mod x plus six greater than zero. Let's say x greater than zero. Then you are solving for x squared minus five plus six greater than zero. Or x is less than zero. Solving for x squared minus five minus x minus five times minus x. X square plus 5x plus 6 greater than 0. Then solve that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, think about mod x square. That's just x square. Square mod x, that's same as x square. Really distinction. Mod x itself is positive. Square will get it as positive. X square will definitely be positive. The, the magnitudes are same, both are positive. This equation is mod x square minus mod x. 5 mod x plus 6 greater than 0. Or this is an inequality in quadratics in mod x. The quadratic equation in mod x. Or this is mod x minus 2, mod x minus 3 greater than 0. What are we doing here? 5 square minus 5y plus 6 greater than 0. 5 square minus 2y minus 3y plus 6 greater than 0. y into y minus 2 minus 3 into y minus 2 greater than 0. y minus 3 into y minus 2 greater than 0. Those of you who are wondering how would I go from here to here? It went from there to there directly because I solved 150 quadratic equations. 
So I'm dragging here. So if you don't do this step like this, it's got no magic to it. It's got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of factors to it. To solve so many quadratic equations, I said, you can factorize the simpler ones and get it. Instead of splitting the middle term and going step by step very methodically, just skipping those couple of steps and doing this thing a little quicker. Not a, a shortcut or tip or tip or a magic bullet or Vedic math, nothing like that. You do 100 questions, you know that. You go on a bike, you know the standard route, you know where the pothole is. You've gone there 10 times. You know the shortcut because you take it. Not because you figured it out or you're a genius. You've gone through the route so many times. You keep your eyes open, you'll find better routes, better variants. That's all there is to it. You do so many quadratic equations that you can pick this and do it like that. Now mod x minus 2 into mod x minus 3 is greater than 0. It's a quadratic in mod x. Mod x should lie outside the roots. So either mod x is greater than 3 or mod x is less than 2. Or x greater than 3 or x less than minus 3. Or minus 2 less than x less than 2. x square minus 5 mod x plus 6 is greater than 0. When does this work? So minus infinity to minus 3. Minus 2 to 2. 3 to infinity. Wonderful question. We do it by multiple methods. What we're doing it, we're looking at this not just as a quadratic in x with some mod x thrown in, but reaching this as a quadratic in mod x. Any quadratic when you're comparing with 0, life is simple. What the expression? We're solving for greater than 0, but the x should lie outside the roots. Solving for less than 0, it should lie between the roots. Here, mod x should lie outside the roots. What are the roots? 2 and 3. Mod x should be either greater than 3 or less than 2. Now you are just writing down the answer. Wonderful question. Beautiful question to think about quadratic inequality with one, one unit of modulus thrown. Let's go to the next one. Again, a very good question. Think about this. Give it a go. We'll discuss that. It's kind of a very good question. So I want to think about how we can solve this using um, your number line, step by step methodical approach, or by doing something like a jazz here. So, modulus of 2x plus 5. So what do you see in this equation? See that one formula, if you know that mod x equal to x, x greater than 0, equal to minus x if x is less than 0. Think about 2x plus 5. Modulus of 2x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 5 is greater than 0 or 2x is greater than minus 5 or x greater than minus 5 by 2 is equal to minus 2x minus 5 if x is less than minus 5 by 2. Likewise, modulus of 3x minus 6 will be equal to 3x minus 6 if 3x minus 6 is greater than 0 or 3x is greater than 6, or x is greater than 2. This will be equal to 6 minus 3x if x is less than 2. So this expression has two, becomes one of two expressions depending on whether x is greater than minus 5 by 2 or less than minus 5 by 2. This becomes one of two expressions depending on whether x is greater than 2 or less than 2. What do we do? We go to our normal line in here. The 0 here, minus 5 by 2 here, and 2 here. When x is greater than 2, that means this range will be 3x minus 6, this will be 2x plus 5. We are solving for 2x plus 5 less than 
three x vanishes. Then x is less than minus pi by two. We are solving for minus two x minus pi by two. Less than six minus three x. In this range, x is greater than minus pi by two. We need two x plus pi. Less than less than two. Six minus three x. Solve for this. Solve for this. Solve for this. Then verify what part of the solution range you get for x fits this criteria that you have assumed. So here you solve, and then impose the criteria that x has to be greater than two. Here you solve, and then you impose the criteria that x lies between minus pi by two and two. Here again we will solve, and then impose the criteria that x should be less than minus pi by two. Put all of that together and get to the right answer. Wonderful method, very useful method, very rigorous method, heavy duty algebra. Please, 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 please do that. Do that once, maybe more than once. Try it out just to see whether the answer works. But we are not going to do with that method. But that is tough, interesting, useful, brilliant to learn. Ticks many boxes. Not perhaps quick enough. So we are going to say, how do we do this? Mod a less than mod b. A square less than b square. They call us isomorphic expressions. And this is true. This is true. And this is true. This is true. Each implies the other. You solve for one. The solution range that you get exactly matches that of solving for the other. Very important here. And not just one way. Each implies the other. And mod a is less than mod b. A square is less than b square. And whenever a square is less than b square, mod a will be less than mod b. Both works. With this inequality range, nothing but the range 2x plus 5 whole square less than 3x minus 6 whole square or 4x squared plus 25 plus 20x less than 9x squared plus 36 minus 36x. Bring everything to one side and bring all of these here 9x squared minus 4x squared, 5x squared minus 36x. Minus 20x minus 56x plus 36 minus 25 plus 11. Sorry. 5x squared minus 56x plus 11 greater than 0. 5x squared minus 55x minus x plus 11 greater than 0. 5x into x minus 11. Minus 1 into x minus 11 greater than 0. 5x minus 1 into x minus 11 greater than 0. The roots are 1 by 5 or 11. We are looking for a quadratic expression that is greater than 0. It should lie outside the roots. What do I mean by outside the roots? Not between 1 by 5 and 11. Or x should be less than 1 by 5. Or x should be greater than 11. Minus infinity to 1 by 5. Union 11 to 8. Remember, from this step onwards, you should just slip into autopilot. You're saying mod 2x plus 5 and mod 3x minus 6. Oh my god, I need to square both sides. Square and then do the quadratic part. I know between the roots outside the roots. Let me just switch off and nail this question down. You should have so many quadratic inequalities. Just slip into a comfort You should know that this can be factorized. You know it can be factorized. Because it has come from the modulus. In modulus, you can solve by solving three linear inequality. There's no possibility of an irrational number coming in. There's no minus b plus minus b plus or minus stuff. You know that this has rational roots. So you should know that this can be factorized. So therefore, you're not even thinking whether it has positive root, uh, real roots, not real roots, equal, nothing. Just looking at this and saying, from this step, all I'm on autopilot. That part is very, very, very vital. You are going to look at this and say, okay, I am going to solve this completely, take it through to the finish from here on. That's very vital. So slip into that mode and you need to solve that so that you don't get tired or burnt out during the exam. Once you are seeing this, one panda, mod a less than mod b, too difficult. I am going to solve and find a square less than b square. How do I solve a square less than b square? I know it is going to become a quadratic. I know how to solve that. Go and solve that. So remember that you need to crack the panda. And then do the mechanics in two parts. But cracking the funda, you can use some, some bandwidth. But doing the mechanics, your hand should automatically move, your, your 
mind to go into half capacity. If you don't do any mistake, you get it right. Otherwise, you'll burn out with just fatigue. You get tired at the end of the exam or halfway through the exam. Keep that in mind. For the next one. By this one, very good question. Candidate question, once again a tough question, question that you need to know some more tough days to, to crack. But one of the questions nevertheless. And so um, I'm, 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 those of you who've not done the theory on, on inequalities, you might find some of these questions to be uh, classically tough, as they should be. So don't blame the questions, they're, they're really interesting questions. Do your theory and then come back and review it. It's a wonderful topic, not, not extraordinarily heavily tested, but uh, very interesting topic to try and solve so that you get your handle on algebra really well. So it's very important. So it's a good topic to even keep as a practice for doing a lot of algebra. And so you'll end up solving gazillion cubics, linear equations, modulus equations, quadratic equations, polynomials, all kinds of stuff. Uh, incidentally, so it serves as good practice for just uh, manipulating x's and y's. So wonderful topic. So do revisit this, do the theory aggressively. I'm going to solve this. Modulus of an expression. So say mod y less than 3. This means y lies between minus 3 and minus 3. I apply the same idea here. The modulus of 2x minus 4 plus 3 lies between 7 and minus 7. Or minus 7 and minus 3 less than modulus of 2x minus 4 less than 7 minus 3. Minus 10 less than modulus of 2x minus 4 less than 4. Right. So, give you a very good starting point. Try this question and then simplify it from here. I just broken down the external modulus. Now, see if you can break down the modulus inside. Beautiful funda, a wonderful funda from our, one of our uh, guys who used to teach for us. Very good funda. Minus 10 less than modulus of 2x minus 4. Modulus of 2x minus 4 is greater than minus 10. When will this happen? I put other way, when will this not happen? When will modulus of a number not be greater than minus 10? Modulus of a number is never greater. Effectively, this. this question effectively number one. Modulus of 2x minus 4 less than 4. 2 times modulus of x minus 2 less than 4. Holding for modulus of x minus 2 less than 2. Minus 2 less than x minus 2 less than 2. Minus 2 plus 2 less than x less than 2 plus 2. Or x lies between 0 and 2. Beautiful question. Something that you can knock off within a minute or so if you know in front of And 
modulus of y less than 3, y should like be minus 3 and 3. Deal with the external modulus first, not it off. Then when you come to the modulus of 2x minus 4, one half of the expression says that this expression should be greater than minus 10. Always do what are we solving, keep it aside. And effectively solving for modulus of 2x minus 4 less than 4 or modulus of x minus 2 less than 4. Our exam was very, very, very brilliant in creating seemingly difficult questions which boil down to very simple ideas. This question is nothing but modulus of x minus 2 less than 2. They have, they have constructed it within the double modulus, which is intimidating. You look at it and go, I've seen so many students come out of exam halls after seeing questions like this saying, too difficult, they need so complicated math, there's a modulus, and then there's x, and then there's another modulus around it. Nothing. It's a very regular question if you know your basics really well. So forget the external modulus, remove that in one step. It's basically say the expression lies between minus 7 and plus 7. Plonk it in and then you are good, done. There's nothing to, practically nothing to solve beyond just that. And so back yourself to be sound in algebra enough to say, you know, do that one step, see where it takes you. It takes you a very simple spot. So the next one. A oh, beautiful question, fabulous question, or my favorite question. Give it a go. So based on this beautiful function called as greatest integer function. The greatest integer function is a beautiful function. Basically, it gives return the greatest integer less than or equal to x. It's a common enough function, but remember, you'll always be given this explanation. You'll be explained. It's not a standard function like the modulus. It's a function that requires definition. Greatest integer of x, box of x, that the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Box of 1.5 greatest integer of 2.9 is 2, greatest integer of 3 is 3, greatest integer of minus 2 is minus 2, greatest integer of minus 2.8 is minus 3, the greatest integer less than or equal to the number inside. If it's an integer, the answer will be itself. But not an integer, you go down and find the smallest, the largest integer just below it. A beautiful function. If you think about it, if you can draw the graph of this, then x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. What is the greatest integer of 0? There is 0. Greatest integer of 0 0.1, 0, 0.20, 0, 0, 0. All of these are 0. And then when you come to 1, how could it be 1? 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, it will be 1. When you come to 2, it will be 2. When you come to 3, it will become 3. Uh, it's this beautiful graph like this. This is why it's called a step function. This is what is called a discrete function, not a continuous function. It jumps, it's not continuous, it just jumps. Forget the technicality, but it looks like steps, so it's called a step function. It's sometimes called the floor function or the ceiling function, depending on how you term it and how you structure it on that. Step function is the most common description. This is what this is. And you don't need to know other, but helps you know this. Just visualize the greatest integer function, the beautiful function to visualize, to see. Now, if all visualize all that is fun, how do we solve it? 
This talks about functions, inequalities, and some probability. I'm going to forget all of that. I'm going to say, let me go to x equal to 1. What happens? Modulus of greatest integer of 1 plus 1 on one side, greatest integer of modulus of 1 plus 1 on the other side. This is modulus of 2. This is greatest integer of 2. This is 2. This is 2. Please go ahead. Like a simple greatest integer of 1 is 1. So 2 will be equal, 3 will be equal. You can sense that. Maybe this won't behave this well when they are non integers thrown. Let's put some non integer in. Say x is 1.5. This is greatest integer of 1.5 plus 1. This side of this. Modulus of 1.5 plus 1. Modulus of 2. This is 1, 1 plus 1, 2. The greatest integer of 0.5. This is also 2. Both sides are again equal. When I put x is 1.5, they are again equal. If you put x equal to 2.5, it will be equal. If you put x equal to 1.99, it will be equal. What happens here? 1.99 will become 1 plus 1. It will become greatest integer of 2.99, which is again 2. If you put x is non integers, positive integers, they are equal. So if you put x equal to something positive, they are again equal. Maybe it will be funny when we put x is negative. Say we put x equal to minus 3. So this side is modulus of greatest integer of minus 3 plus 1. This side is greatest integer of modulus of minus 3 plus 1. This is modulus of minus 3 plus 1 greatest integer of 3 plus 1 this is 4 this is 2 this is less than this when you put a negative integer and we want to find out when it will be positive what are the probability that it will be positive if from one value when it is negative and not positive we are trying to find out probability will be greater found out one set of values where it will be lesser the final category, let's put x equal to minus 2.5. Let's try that out. Modulus of greatest integer of minus 2.5 plus 1. Compared with greatest integer of modulus of minus 2.5 plus 1. This is modulus of minus 3 plus 1. Greatest integer of 2.5 plus 1. This is minus 3 plus 1, which is 2. This is 2.5 plus 1, that is 3.5. Greatest integer of that is 3. This is less than that. Remember, we are now getting a pattern here. Whenever we put x is any positive integer, they are equal. When you put x is any positive non integer, they are equal. When you put x is a negative integer, this is less than that. When you put x is a negative non integer, is less than that. It turns out that this part is lesser or equal to this, lesser than or equal to that, never greater. So, what is the probability that this left hand side will be greater than the right hand side? There is no value of x for which the left hand side is greater than the right hand side. Sometimes it is equal, sometimes it is lesser, never greater. The probability is zero. Beautiful question because if we tend to think of inequalities, we tend to think of functions, we have to account for probability. It sounds like you're thinking about functions, inequalities, and probability, three seemingly tough topics. The question actually is very simple. All you've got to do is substitute a bunch of points and then imagine this. You can even sense why they'll be equal when x is positive. When x is negative, the greatest integer becomes the lesser number or the larger magnitude negative number that plays a role. So, greatest integer of 2.5 is 2, greatest integer of minus 2.5 is minus 3. The greatest integer less than or equal to the number. So, the magnitude is going to become higher when you go to the negative territory, which is why you should behave funny in negative numbers. That is the funda we are trying to explore in this question. Greatest integer of 2.6 is 2. Greatest integer of minus 2.6 is minus 3. 
not minus 2. So the greatest integer is the greatest integer lesser or equal to the number. You have to put a number less than, you have to go less than the given number and then wait till you get a hidden integer. That's what you're trying to find out here. And so it's a, it's a beautiful question only to kind of explore the idea of greatest integer and more or less together. Seemingly tough, but very doable. Time consuming, no doubt, but doable, no, not, not impossible. Again, a beautiful question. Again, one of my favorite questions because you need nothing more than common sense to crack this question. Give this a go. Use lots and lots of common sense to try to solve this question. You need a loaded issue here. As much common sense as possible to try to solve this. Forget your theory of maxima, minima, inequalities, functions. This type of inequality, that type of inequality, maximize this, minimize this differentiation. Bakwas! Completely forget about all jazzed up theoretical terms. You think like a seventh standard student, eighth standard student. You know, they're very playful before they know their algebra. Then they are introduced to algebra and then they're not taught everything about algebra. Tell them x plus y is 10, they'll say, ah, 1 and 9 will work. No. You know, tell them 2 and 8 will also work. Uh, then they are ex exposed to 2 and 8 working, 3 and 7 working. Think like that. Become younger. Don't become this uh, heavy duty XYZ animal. The more joy in algebra if you can't think numbers. In the end, these are covers under which some numbers are sitting. This question additionally says XYZ are natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Numbers even before our trillion zero came into the picture. And so natural numbers. So oh, fine. You know why natural numbers are called natural numbers? Those are the numbers people had. That's where they were thinking about and doing. And then zero came into the picture. They had to introduce zero and then include that in the set of numbers. And then the, the, the theory came about that we did not think of zero originally. We naturally only thought of the remaining. Let's call that as natural numbers. Then we make the set whole by adding zero to the mix. Right? It's a hypothesis about how people have named the set of natural numbers and whole numbers. Brilliant idea of making whole. Otherwise, if these were just called numbers, we coined that set as natural numbers only after zero came into the picture. And why should we lose bragging rights when we have it? So it is universally accepted that uh, zero came from, from, from Asia, from India. And so contributed nothing to the mathematical world. Great on Try this one beautiful question. Those of you who are thinking that the class is going slightly quicker, I remember that the, 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 the online format is beautiful because it uh, it removes the constraints of space and time. The one thing it does not do is removing the constraint of pace or speed. The class goes in its own speed. So the advantage you have in an online class that's going to be on, on a hosted platform is you can hit pause and continue later on. You're not letting go of anything. At this point, when you're saying, look, this guy seems to be saying something, something sensible, seems to be something interesting here. But um, I, I, I don't have time to, to digest everything. I've not consolidated one idea. This dude here is sitting in the middle of the night and he's rushing towards idea two, three, four, and end. So all of us need to learn at our own pace. We need to consolidate one idea. Only then we'll become receptive to the next idea. So, the number one problem of education seen across the world is space setting. Great many people are not given the time to consolidate their ideas. And I'm finding this problem to be rampant, particularly in India, especially in schools, doing a bunch of workshops with schools. In schools, you won't believe it. The students stop thinking the moment somebody shouts out an answer. The answer could even be wrong. But the first answer has so much value 
the case completely to see out the first time. The wrong first screen hit some enormous browning point. I don't know why we have fetishized speed with this extent. The moment somebody says the answer, it's like people are putting more and more of their brain into solving it. The moment somebody answers, they put less and less of their brain into solving it. So uh, we shut down after somebody answers a question. Shut down if they're not quick. It's a crime that that building that happened. But what happens subsequently is you shut down a couple of times, you lose steam. The class is going on at its own pace and you are doing things at your own pace. There's, the pace is very discordant and then you say, look, I'm getting no value from it. You either blame the system or the teacher or something else. And then you come back to your books, which are not quite as impactful as the listening visual medium. And so, uh, worldwide, they're trying to create a scenario where students learn at their own speed. Location and time are there. But speed is very important. So that the online format, we have fought tooth and nail to keep the system extremely modularized. In the online course, every question is a standalone video, standalone set of lessons, standalone facts, standalone slides. And so you get one idea, you're comfortable, and you say, look, I've got this, I've got this. Then you move to the next one. Otherwise, you're playing catch up. I mean, I, I used to feel this frequently. Uh, where I'm, I'm continuously playing catch up in a class. So you shouldn't play catch up in a class. Even there are some online classes where you're continuously playing catch up. There's a bus till you when you're riding with it. And then the vehicle goes off. Then once the vehicle moves, you switch off. You can't catch it. But it's gone. Then you lose steam. So, so manage your speed. I'm saying all this to remind you guys relentlessly that at some point of time you feel like you can cut this, but it's not gone and sat in the right place. I need to think about this, shut my eyes, run it on my own system one more time, digest all of this. Only then it is going to be useful for the next time I want to need this thing. And you do that and then come back to the class. I'm running this class from, from 10 to 11. You can learn from 10, 5 to 11, 40. So don't run with that class. You shut up the teacher, just hit pause. You have the system available there, hit pause, and then that's you ready. So I'm going to have a crack at this. I'm going to forget about this question. Say, let me do a two-variable thing. The A plus B is 10. I want to find the maximum value of A to A plus B. So I love reducing variables, limiting touch time, thinking about ideas, then expanding it. Well, subtract values 5 and 5, 4 and 6, 3 and 7, 9 and 1, 1 and 9, whatever. This is 5 square plus 5 square, 25 plus 25, 50. 4 square plus 6 square, 16 plus 36, 52. 9 plus 49, 58. 81 plus 1, 82. This keeps on increasing. Squaring is a big bazooka. And so you put more of the stuff to be squared in one number, it finds bigger and bigger. You have to split 10, you put it equally as 5 and 5. By tracking the squares, you make them unequal, the square will increase. Taking from 5, 4 numbers and adding it to create a 9, will make the 9 square way bigger than the 5 square. But the 1 square is only slightly smaller. The square is the thing that keeps, if you look at the square graph, it will explode when you think about numbers more than one. It becomes bigger and bigger, faster and faster space. 5 plus 2 is 7. But from 5 square to 7 square is such a big number, big shift. The square will tack on a lot. So when you have two numbers that add up to 10, you split them up, you make them heavily unequal. The extra value from the large number will be far more the loss of value from the small number. So I've set this question up for you. X plus 2y plus 5z, 3z. X plus 2y plus 3z is 15. They're all natural numbers. Make two numbers. Small, one number, large. Good, you're done. That's what you're looking to do. You make x small and y small. Say you put x as 1, y as 1. And the circle get 3. 3z three is 15. That doesn't work. But say 3z is 47. That is close to 16. Put z as 16. That's 48. 
is one. Then only nothing remaining. Put it as 15. Put something here, say 211. From there, you can figure it out. But if you put x and y are small, 3z is the remaining. So z will be remaining by 3. Very vital point here. I'm not worrying about the numbers. But x and y are very small. Y will be large. Sorry, z will be large. But it's 3z that is large. Then it should become a smaller number. The next funda we need to crack here. First funda to crack is make them dramatically unequal. One number very large, other two numbers small. Which two numbers small, which one very large? Make y and z small, x very large. Or effectively put z equal to 1, y equal to 1. 3z is 3, 2y is 2, x should be 45. Can't compete with 45 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. 2025 plus 1 plus 1 is 2027. That is what you added to the box. Brilliant question because you don't need any kind of inequality formula. Effectively, we are saying the square animal is interesting. Split the numbers up. The gain from the larger number far surpasses the loss from the smaller number. So you have three numbers, make one very large, another two very small. That's a funda. Funda one. Funda two. What will I make large? What will I make small? They make x and y small and z large, y and z small and x large. You can make x and z small and y large. That doesn't work. That bang in the middle. One of the other will be better than that. Of course, we know. And so, if you make x and y small, 3, 3z will be large, z will shrink. Not good enough. You want to make one of them very high. So, x plus 2y plus 3z is 50. Make y and z as 1 each. This question is good because we're talking about natural number. It will be better. If you told distinct natural number, then you can't put one and one, you have to figure that out, that bit also out. Try that, no harm, give that a go. Otherwise, you're putting y as 1, z as 1, x as 45, you're done. That's a maximum x, x squared plus y squared plus z squared and take. That's the value you're looking for. Beautiful question. Keep saying beautiful question, you know. One of the classes, one of my students said, you describe every question as beautiful. What's the point? There's no distinction. You're not using that adjective sufficiently. He said, bah! I'm not I'm not one to worry about wasted adjectives. I'll do that when I'm teaching English or when I'm writing something. Yeah, the question is beautiful. It will be called as a beautiful question. Then we'll tack on more adjectives. Oh, wondrously beautiful, brilliant, excellent, extraordinary, fantabulous. Those adjectives come, the question is more than beautiful. Otherwise, why will we deal with less than beautiful questions? Obviously, unless otherwise stated, questions are beautiful. And so try this one, good question. Do this with trial and error, give it a go, sense a pattern, and then we'll do the cheap like We've already done the trial and error pattern busting part once. I'm going to do the more algebraic route once, just for, for the heck of it. Give it a go. I think we are going close to the 11 o'clock mark, so I'm going to rush through this one, give you the idea. Do trial and error and sense and all that. We've already done that one, so I'm going to do this algebra. What the heck of it? Why would you not do it? x plus 3y equal to 32. I want to find maximum value of xy. Or uh, think about it like that 3y 32 minus x. Y 32 minus x by 3 x into y is x into 32 minus x by 3. I want to find the maximum possible value. 
or we want to maximize x into 32 minus x. 32x minus x squared. Want to maximize this. Think about it. Or we want to minimize x squared minus 32x. Think about this beautiful funda. It's called completion of squares. X squared minus 32x plus something. We make this a square term. What is a square term? Think about that. X square minus 32x plus 256. We we'll make it a square term. You can't just do plus 256, but minus 256. Or x minus 16, the whole square, minus 256. That's what this expression becomes. Not 32x minus x square, x square minus 32x. That has to be minimum. That will be minimum when x is 16. Of this whole thing is a roundabout way. I know when this expression goes to a minimum, x squared minus 32x, when does it go to a minimum? So, once you figure that out, once you say x could be 16, try that, see if it works, see if there are other possibilities that can work, and then come back to natural numbers. Part. And we're going to take this up and solve it in more detail later on. Possibly we'll start with this question at the next session that we have on inequalities. Solve this in much more detail, but I've given you a lot to work with. Work with that, especially the completion of squares idea. We left that on the table. We're going to have one more session on inequalities soon, if not the forthcoming session, a session, couple of sessions after that. Then we'll take up this and then do a bunch of exercises where the uh, the completion of squares idea comes into the picture completely, dramatically. So we won't do that. But try this one. Trial and error works, you put x equal to 16, find a value of y, you put x equal to 30, find a value of y. Find scenarios where x and y are both natural numbers, find different combinations, see which one works. Very good. You put x is 17, y is 5, or x is 14, y is 6, and then find different variants out. One of those could work, and that's what you're looking at. Right? So the algebraic method is what you have tried, done. The trial and error work method works magically. Give that a go. I'm going to start with that. Wonderful hanging out here, you guys. Um, back out, go to stop sharing modes. I'm going to stop, stop sharing the screen. So I'm going to sit here and see whether I can see the video by. All the best. Be good fun hanging out and, and solving this. Uh, interesting session. Any word is an important topic, especially for uh, getting setting the base on algebra. Get lots and lots of practice for algebra. Inequalities less important than what you learn in algebra by solving inequalities at this. And so to solve that, quite a few of you are answering questions where the fractions and what to be careful about that. The question I think says natural numbers. You can't have a, a something by three or something by seven. So 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 learn pick the detail on that very clearly. All the best. Have fun, have a good weekend on what's, uh, what's left of it. Have good fun with time. Always, always have fun with time. Mm -hmm.